What's up guys? Welcome back to the BMW M3 Touring. Welcome back to another video. Today is finally the day that we can do the 2000 kilometer break-in service on my M3 Touring. So I'm pretty excited about this because it kind of unlocks a lot of the potential of the car, well a lot of the potential. Basically the engine is kind of running on a limited mode for the first 2000 kilometers so that you're not too aggressive with the car before it's kind of ready. So some brands will take care of the break-in period for you before you end up uh, buying the car but then others you have a, a certain break-in period. A friend, I did that video where I went to pick up the Lamborghini Urus with Alex on Moreau and he has a 3,000 kilometer break-in period. This was 2,000, so still quite a lot though. They're becoming longer and longer, I feel. Anyway, today I'm in Geneva. I'm going to a garage called the Facinetti uh, BMW garage. It's this, the local, B closest BMW garage here in Geneva, in a place called Meyran. And I've never been there before, so it's gonna be cool to kind of have a look around the dealership, see how things are over there, and then also, learn a little bit more about why do you need this service, how much does it cost, because I think there is a cost associated to this, uh, what do they do to justify that cost, and you know, all of that kind of stuff. So I thought I'd bring you along for the adventure, see what this all entails. I'm a little bit late, so I'm going to press on a little bit and catch up with you guys at the dealership. So guys, look, I've come down to this like vehicle preparation area. Um, which is awesome. There's the new X7. Um, there's an X3M right here. There's loads of cool cars, but this is this is the star of the show. Look at this M4 CSL with the yellow lights in the front. Really cool. The new front grille also. It's always awesome when you bring your cars. Taking it up to um, to start the service. We'll go see it in a second um, to kind of discover what's uh, lying around as stock. So yeah, I mean, awesome. You've also got a look on the interior here. You've got the seats with the CSL, like that lights up here. It's, it's actually quite similar on the inside, but you can tell, I mean, look at all the carbon right there. They've taken the door away from the charger and the CSL logo here. I mean, yeah, there's just yeah loads of little details. Look at the steering wheel in Alcantara as well. And you still got the head up display. So you still got quite a few luxuries. The, the, it's the older interface. It doesn't have the double screen interface that the Touring has. Oh, and also, main point, no rear seats. But it's got quite a good boot. It does have the carbon um, roof right there and the new lights on the, on the rear. It's, yeah, stunning. We're going to hear the startup. It's deeper than the sound on the, on the M3. It's just a little... Just, everything's just that little bit more. It's just turned up to 11. Look, you've got the BMW laser lights right there. Guys, look at this. We've just joined up with the touring. It's being worked on now. Protecting the front of it, basically, for all the cables and, when, and the cars being worked on. Changing the oils right here. It's gonna be a, they kind of unlock the full potential of the car after this break-in service. Um, so yeah, obviously going easy before it, and then you can kind of unleash it, rev up to the red line, and enjoy the car properly after. It takes about, let's say, an hour and a half, two hours to do all of this. Very kindly, I do have the option of having a loan car, you know, when uh, they're working on it in case you need to still go around and do your thing. So you can see here, we're just rinsing everything out, getting the car ready, everything looks good thus far, which is a good sign. So as you can tell, it is important to respect this braking period, not to go too crazy with the car before. And uh, they just, they're checking also the uh, tire pressures, they're going, you know, plug it in to check on the computer that there's no other faults or anything like that before a client comes to pick the car up again and then off you go guys they just changed the um, filters but look at this this is already pretty used actually after only 1800 kilometers well, look, you have to climb up that's why they put the protections and then somehow manage to wiggle your way through i mean look how busy it is under the hood here um but yeah they know exactly where to put everything it's cool it's awesome to be able to see this happening also look at all the protections on the seats and all that stuff to make sure that uh, everything is all fine emptied the car out of its various liquids replaced that and then now the filters and then you're pretty much good to go little by little they'll unlock the full power of the car and there we go it's all cleaned up guys look at this you get the wash included uh, which is yeah it looks awesome look at it but yeah so let's hop back in the car 
It's all done, full braking period service done. Let's debrief in the car. We're back in the car. Okay, so in theory, I can now go up to, well, over, up and over 4,000 RPM, which is pretty exciting. But the engine automatically doesn't really give you its full power when it's cold, which it currently is, even though it's a beautiful day out. So we're gonna need to be a little patient still before we can kind of blast it. Thankfully, 1800 kilometers is fine to do this service. As long as you're around 2000, you know, if you're at 3000, it starts to become a little bit, um, you know, too late. Or if you're at, you know, 1200 kilometers, it's a bit too early. But um, yeah, I mean, it didn't really matter that I was 200 under. They're really nice. They checked all the tire pressures and basically then plug the car in. A lot of it happens on the computer. So plug the car in. A, they did a check to make sure everything was okay and it all popped up green on the screen, which was awesome. And B, then they unlock. So they take off this break-in service mode, which then allows you to have full access to all of the power of the engine. So once all of that's done, you then go downstairs and the total cost of this service is 680 Swiss francs. And then that's it for, I believe, I think it's two years, uh, yeah, two years or 30,000 kilometers, whichever comes first. So either you need to go back in two years, or if you, once you've hit 30,000 kilometers, you need to go back for them to do basically a similar kind of service. So yeah, pretty straightforward. I did have access to a courtesy car if I were to need one while, uh, while I was there. You know what, even though the engine's not particularly warm, so shall we see if we can go in sport mode, manual, M1. Oh, the car sounds a little, and give it a little acceleration. <laughs> okay, I'm still not revving it a lot, but you have more access to more power all of a sudden. I don't quite know exactly what the difference is. They didn't seem to really want to tell me, but yeah, all of a sudden just feels more responsive. Just like I have instant access to more. I don't want to rev it too high. Oh, it sounds good. Sounds like now we're getting there. We're going to be able to have fun with the car without feeling like I'm mistreating it. This is what it's meant to do. It's meant to be driven this way from now, not before. It's so frustrating when you're in the car and you can't quite go for it there were times i was on beautiful roads you have a friend in the car or whatever and you really want to have a have a good time with it and because you're in that braking phase it just yeah it's just so frustrating but yeah 2000 kilometers does seem long now for these for these braking periods but you know once it's done once it's over with and fantastic and this car's gonna get a lot more miles on it oh, the paddles feel so nice it is awesome, this thing. I plan on taking it to some really nice roads. I'm gonna try, there's not much snow at the moment, but I'm gonna try and take it to some snow maybe as well. Put some winter tires on the car and just use it, you know, to the maximum and bring you along for every part of the adventure. So I don't know if this is particularly interesting to you guys, but I told myself I would, you know, really give you the full experience on what it's like to own an M3 Touring. So hopefully, Hopefully you find this kind of stuff interesting, following the various steps of ownership. And if you do, then subscribe to this channel because there are gonna be plenty more videos with this car and some others while we're at it. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'm gonna enjoy this car a little bit more now and I'll see you for the next video. Cheers.